I see so many familiar faces, uh, and I'm, I'm so uh, sorry that we have to meet on these circumstances. Um, you know, we've been working with GNF for so many years to uh, increase the population of the Arava, and never in our wildest dream uh, have we thought that in uh, overnight, uh, our 5,000 uh, people community will absorb 2,200 people that are now living in the Arava. We increased our numbers by 45%. Um, we are very um, proud to be a safe haven for our brothers and sisters who are fleeing the war. Um, and uh, the entire community has been, uh, has recruited itself for the efforts to make sure that these people uh, will have uh, a place where they can um, try to recover uh, if there is something like that exists. Um, when it started, when Black Sabbath happened, uh, the first responders were the people, the people of the community. The, they just cried out, come, and hundreds of people came. And people opened their homes. Um, our entire B&B &B industry, our tourism industry, right now there is 99% occupancy in all the Zimmers in the Alva. A lot of them you've stayed before with people who fled the war not being compensated by the country, just, you know, a call out, whoever wants refuge in the Arava, come. Uh, we set up a, a, a call center that matches owners of Zimmers and even, you know, open rooms in, in houses and families who wants to be ev evacuated. So the, the challenge of, uh, and I'm talking right now as a regional municipality, the challenge of um, addressing the needs of 45% more people with different needs than the people that are living in Darva is a huge task. So the first thing was the people themselves kicking into action and opening their homes and their hearts and feeding people and doing the laundry and just caring for their immediate needs. But then after two days, we've, uh, we've realized that as a municipality, uh, we have to be able to operate uh, and to provide all the needs of the people that are now living in the Alva in parallel to the needs of the local community where the schools were closed, the kindergarten was closed, people were um, a recruit, being recruited to the army. The community here was also a lot of, uh, under a lot of stress. So, um, the first thing we understood that we are we need to operate as our own little um, government. The government of Israel, um, let's say in the most um, delicate way, takes time to respond. And we need to only uh, depend upon ourselves, caring for our people and the 2,200 people that are now joining the region. So we started setting up uh, operational system to care for the people. The first thing was food. You need to feed 2,200 people. You know, the little stores in the Ava were in, even in if our little grocery store, we're not used to having, in my community, we're 500 residents. All of a sudden, we have 150 more in the Moshav. The, the milk ran out in two days. The little things. You know, where do you buy things? We're very far away from the center and the supply had to be uh, thought of in a different way and security had to be thought of in a different way. We needed to set up our own squad teams. We needed to rely on the uh, JNF response, JNF emergency response volunteers um, and all the facilities that we have been building together with JNF for so many years the medical center, the emergency response center, the aquatic center, uh, the kindergartens, all of a sudden kick into action and even took on a different hat. If you'll see right now the emergency response center, you'll see that in the offices, there are the police and the rescue unit and the uh, volunteers and Magenda Vidadom who are working to provide service to the people here. There's a 24 seven guard uh, on all the communities and people are here doing shifts because all the gates are closed and we are on a border, which we don't know if it will be hostile or not. And we need to protect the people and the 2,200 people who now has to rely on us for their safety. But on the other hand, the corridors, every inch 
Uh, you see boxes of food, boxes of clothes, boxes of toys, boxes of washing machines, dryers, appliances, everything. So people can come in and take whatever they need because people fled their homes with their flip-flops and their pajamas. So an entire logistic operational system had to be formed from the ERC that goes down to the Moshavim. And now every Moshav has its own logistic center. And we are in touch. We have a headquarters in the regional council in touch with all the, uh, with all the companies, the commercial companies in Israel. And every day there are trucks coming in with donation of bicycles, uh, towels, toilet paper, and pumpers. We gathered the needs of the community. We started organizing lists. Who are the people that came? How many people per family? What are their needs? How many kids from what age? Because we need to set up a different municipality system to care for the people. And that's what we did. By the way, I think three days after the war, uh, I got a phone call from Tali Tsur, the chief of operation of Israeli officer. Noah, what do you need? I told the Tali, we need to feed the people. The next day, I got a very, very substantial um, check. Go feed the people. No, nothing. The day following, what do you need? I need the medical, I need medical to, uh, applies. I need the medical uh, equipment. You know, 2,200 people more. We need to care for them. So every, every aspect of municipal life had to be doubled and had to be um, taken into consideration that there are different needs that now to be addressed. Um, I had a conversation this week with Tali. We are setting up an educational system because the kids that are coming to the lab, there are 900 kids in the Arava right now. We need to give them kindergartens. We need to give them the educational activities. We are setting up a school together with JNF. So the children here will have a, some sort of a daily routine life. Uh, we are going down to the Moshevim with teacher soldiers. So the kids will have activities. Everything, of the, everything that has to do with the municipal life, uh, we are organizing as a headquarters, but the communities themselves are kicking in and every community has its own set of volunteers that are working to provide people with their needs. Each Mushav has its own logistics center run by volunteers. They have their own educational committee, entertainment committee. Everything is being organized. The one thing that we have in our advantage that is that we have always worked as communities because that's, how, that's what you do when you, you need to survive. So uh, the, the communal form uh, and the way we act is very uh, cohesive and everything is now being dealt with volunteers and also by the regional council. And I have to tell you, people here are not thinking about themselves. They are just, you know, wanted to give shelter and help the people and provide them with some sort of a normality. Um, right now we're setting up a psychological operational system because people are here and they need psychological care and our own therapists are dealing with 5,000 people. Amongst them are people that also have been personally suffering from the um, consequences of the ongoing war and everything has to be built from scratch, but that's what we do. We are setting up now operational systems uh, to all the needs of the communities. And actually we've adopted Eshkol Regional Council. We have the headquarters together with representative of Eshkol and we're working together with them to understand what are their needs and how can we address them. And I wanna take this, tent, take this opportunity to thank uh, you guys, Jewish National Fund and the operation here in Israel. It, not only do I don't need to, pick up the phone and call JNF. I'm getting phone calls every day. What do you need? How can we help? Uh, and debates are being carried out in the most professional way to make sure we are doing things in the most efficient way, according to the needs of the people. It's not enough to be, give the framework. You need to make sure it's suitable for what the people need. And we are doing fine tuning every day. And I have to tell you that in the past week, we are getting now requests from the North from the Upper Galilee, from Nahariya, because Israel is now being, is evacuating uh, citizens from them. And you, we always hear about the hotels in the Dead Sea and the hotels in Elat. Friends, you have to understand people who live in Moshavim and communities, for them to live in a hotel, it's like a golden cage. They need the rural environment that the Arava can offer. They need their, the same way of life 
for them to try to to uh, breathe a little bit, to be stuck in a hotel room for somebody who used to live in a moshav. That's not what they need. And we know that and we are ready uh, and getting ready for the day that more and more people will come and think of solutions together with GNF. How can we absorb more people and provide them what we need in, in uh, parallel to making sure that the border here is safe, that our volunteers are making sure that the communities are safe, that we are providing the needs for our own community. And you know the challenges of the ALVA. Um, the only thing that we have for our advantage is our geographic isolation that now Knockwood provide us with some sort of um, safety. Uh, we're too far away to be considered a prime, prime target. Uh, so we are taking on our responsibility. And one last word, agriculture in Israel now is um, in a very, very, uh, in a deep crisis. All the farmers in Gaza envelope are, don't have any workers. Uh, the foreign workers are now fleeing the country. And there is a real um, danger that of a shortage in fruits and vegetables in the market and not just fruits and vegetables, dairy farms and other, other products. We take a lot of pride in the fact that the, com the community here is making sure that we keep on producing what we produce. We always said that we are the emergency food barn of Israel and we fulfill that role proudly. And I hope that people in Israel will wake up and understand that food security is national security and has to be taken in the same um, um, respect because agriculture is what protects the border. All the kibbutzim that were uh, damaged are agricultural kibbutzim, and we hope that we'll be able to help our brothers and sisters that are farming as well. So again, thank you so much. And I hope you'll see the resilience of our community. It's just a small story of communities all over Israel that are now gathered together to make sure that people will have um, uh, will have somewhere to go to. And I think that's the the... That's how we're going to win the war with love, with, with people taking care of people, with Am Israel accountable for one another, with us getting together on this call, caring for the people, and the uh, social solidarity that is embedded within our genes. So, Noah, first of all, thank you for everything you're doing. Um, a few people have asked, maybe you could just give the geographic location of what's considered the R of R. So the Alva is halfway between Belsheva and Elat, right along the Jordanian border. It's um, a regional council which encompasses 6% of the land, seven communities, rural communities, mostly agricultural communities. Um, very far, it's about two hours drive from Belsheva, uh, two hours, two and a half hours, very remote, deep down in the desert. Uh, we always kid around that nobody wants to live in the Arava because the conditions here are very, very challenging. And this is the only time where we see it as an advantage, sadly. 